Howdy there folks, Text of the Black Pants Legion here. This is a series called Text Talks Battletech, which if you're not familiar with it, it's because YouTube has more or less declared war on fun. I mean, this is a segment where I talk about the universe of Battletech, from the mechs to the pilots to the history that contains them. This entry was chosen by my fans and subscribers on a channel poll, polls which you may see if you are indeed a subscriber. This time around, we're covering the Thor. So you may be asking yourself, what the hell is a Thor? Well, firstly, only some of you are going to call it a Thor. Dirty clanners are going to call it a summoner because they're Jade Falcon and they don't like anything and they're so keen to conquer the inner sphere and then proceed to lose to space AT&T. Comstar for life, baby. Well, okay, let's get back to the main points. What the Inner Sphere designated the Thor, they did so after the Old Norse God of fucking shit up. Lightning, storms, and strength, and oh, oak trees? Yeah, oak trees. I'm not making that up. God of Oak. The Inner Sphere labeled the Thor as such because it's robust as all hell. The Thor is a highly mobile 70-ton Omni-Mech with respectable jump capacity. It hits like a fucking truck and it can get in your face in seconds. As I am massively inclined to call myself proudly a citizen of the Inner Sphere, I'm going to refer to this mech as the Thor from here on out. Clanners can downvote at their leisure but I will be challenging them to a trial of possession for their pants shortly. We'll see how that shakes out. Now, Omnimech is clanner speak for Clan Coyote Space Magic. Basically, an Omnimech is a massively configurable, customizable modular weapon system. The Thor is a 70-ton Omnimech that is essentially a wild card, capable of being fit into any combat role and excelling at it. Or at least being very competent in a general configuration within the tonnage of a heavy mech. Whereas many Omnimechs generally trend towards specialization within a niche and a variety within that specialization, the Thor is a clan heavy that is reasonably balanced across mobility, bang bang, and durability. As well, it is notably reliable and fairly common across all clanner developments. In most cases, the Thor has an advanced, lightweight, and very reliable Redline 350XL engine that drives the mech comfortably to its combat speed of 86 kilometers per hour. For communication, the Thor carries a model JD-067, manufactured for use in the Thor and the Thor only by Clan Jade Falcon. The targeting system is a Hawkeye 58 serving targeting and tracking plus advanced fire control. Being jump capable to 150 meters in a single bound, this combined with its speed to afford extreme mobility for a heavy mech. Its armor is advanced clanner ferro fibrous and it has nine and a half tons of it in most configurations. So it's a fairly robust mech in the damage mitigation department. Rounding things out for heat mitigation are 14 double heat sinks, which allow it to use its weapons free without much need or worry of heat management. The history of the Thor is somewhat shrouded, mainly because the clanners are an insular culture, to say the least. Starting in 2863, the mech was introduced by Clan Jade Falcon, after acquiring the Omnimech technology from Clan Coyote. Between that time and the clan invasion crossing into the periphery, in the late 3040s, the clan more or less used it for slap fights. I mean, honor duels amongst themselves. Based on this continued infighting between genetically engineered super soldiers driven by an honor-burdened military society, the Thor was developed into quite an effective murder platform, and the clanners who drove them learned how to apply the weapon where it did the most damage. So, after nearly two centuries of practice with the damn thing, the clans invaded the inner sphere and pretty much blew everyone away metaphorically as well as quite literally blowing everyone away. As it turns out, having a 200-year 
plus edge on somebody because you didn't lose technology stupidly through technological regression over the course of four massive wars is pretty goddamn powerful. Namely, alongside extremely competent and capable commanders, the clans managed to smash the hell out of the Inner Sphere in a blitzkrieg not since recreated in the history of the Inner Sphere. One on one, tonnage for tonnage, Inner Sphere pilots found themselves outmatched by better machinery, pilots bred for the purpose of driving it into combat, and a technological edge that bordered on nightmare fuel. As for Thor variants, well, there's a lot, so buckle the fuck up. As stated, this is an Omnimech, and therefore the notion of a primary or standard configuration is laughable. The clans each have their own preferences, and each mission may carry custom loadouts. Clanners customize their rides more than a Jingle Trunk driver in Afghanistan, or a Solaris Jock on Solaris 7, or that kid around the block who bought a 1988 Honda Civic hatchback and won't stop talking about the sick time he's been putting in down at the drag. The closest we can get to a default configuration most would find unimaginative, but damned effective by 3050 standards. One ERPPC, one LB-10X autocannon, and one LRM-15. These three weapons allow it to fight at long to medium range comfortably, with the knowledge they can easily redeploy at a moment's notice if things get dicey. Now as for alternative variants, okay, let's dive into these quickly because there are umpteen bajillion of them. Each clan vehicle is like this because clanners only think in terms of war. That explains their music and culture. Take that! Right in the fields, if you had any, which you don't. Alternative Configuration A replaces all weaponry with a Gauss rifle, a large pulse laser, and an SRM-6. Alternative Configuration B carries two LRM-20s to become King of Mistletown. And for short range as two SRM-4s, because if you're going to die to ammunition explosions, you might as well be seen from orbit. Alternative Configuration C is your general worst nightmare build because it jumps into range and it has an ER large laser, an Ultra Auto Cannon 20, and Streak SRM 6s because fuck you, you can't have nice things. The D model is balanced. It has two ER large lasers for long range, two ER medium lasers for shorter ish range, and an advanced targeting computer plus machine guns to handle proles on foot, and an anti missile system round things out so you can stand there and strut around like a total Chad in a war zone. Model E is chock full of advanced tactical missiles with an ER PPC for backup. When you have an ER PPC for backup purposes, you're talking about a clan mech. Model F is sometimes known as the King of Daka because it has two rapid firing Ultra AC5s, one in each arm, plus two ER medium lasers for backup, and an LRM 10 to discourage everything else. Why? Because it's funny. Model G is a sniping variant, blending the model's stated rapid mobility and pairing it with one ER PPC and one large laser. For backup, six SRM 4s because light scout mechs need to die in one pull of the trigger. Model H is a Model T but on space crack. Two heavy large lasers plus two ER medium lasers and a targeting computer allows for it to decide who dies and then make them do so directly by surgically applying overwhelming heavy damage to where it will have catastrophic hilarious effect. Model M. Well, Model M is driven by a cartoon overlord by the name of Nikolai Malthus. This guy's an idiot. He's such an idiot that his appearances are non-canonical apocryphal except in the sense that the whole cartoon is now considered an in-universe propaganda. That's how you fucking retcon, by the way. You hear me, GW? You hear me, Games Workshop? This is how you fucking retcon. You take something that's weird that doesn't fit anymore, that's so goddamn strange that it made it onto actual television, and you go, oh, well, this is propaganda from the Tharcad Broadcast Company, and you retcon it as an in-universe tongue-in-cheek joke. Boom. Handled. So in short, the Model M is driven by this guy. Just don't be this guy, okay? He abducted a whole planet to play funny. Seriously. There are even more variants. Far more. In the novel, there's a fellow by uh, the name of Aiden Pride. 
P-R-Y-D-E being his blood name. And more on that later, if you fucks vote for it. Anyway, he's in quite a few books that the setting has produced, namely Blood Name, Way of the Clans, and Falcon Guard. And as an aside, look, if your military insignia is a fucking bird holding a katana, fix that shit. Falcon Guard or not, you can do better. Anyways, Aiden loved the quote summoner unquote and favored an Ultra AC-10 and an Ultra AC-5 with two ER medium lasers and two clan anti-missile systems, and he was okay in it. Until he got smoked by Comstar. Some would blame the fact that he drove a Timberwolf that day as no summoner was available in his garrison cluster. But also it's Comstar, and Comstar tends not to fuck around. The Thor has a few famous pilots. Being that it's actually a decent weapons platform and rides the line between small heavy and assault territory while not compromising the all-important balance for a good mech to become truly great in the right hands, the Thor has routinely lended itself to historical excellence. Famous pilots include Aiden Pride, who managed to be a fucking legend in Jade Falcon before he got curb stomped by Space AT&T for not paying his bills. Con Martha Pride drove one on and off her whole damn life. Star Commander Joanna smashed Con Natasha Kerensky at Twycross driving a Thor all the while. Famous inner sphere pilots, you ask? Well, no. We tend to drive the flashier Mad Cat because it makes Clanners mad when we turn it into a wrecking ball for Solaris games. Now as for other interesting facts, I have to start with this. Before you go, oh man, Tex, it sounds like an anti-everything weapon wrapped in sexy, sexy forbidden technology. God, it's harder than an elemental's abs on core strength day. Consider this. For the price of a Thor. For the price of a single Thor at 21,320,834 sea bills, you could buy 11 Urban Max, or 7 Rommels, or 3 Awesomes plus spare parts, or 2 Atlases plus spare parts, or 30 Elementals and all their honor, or in 3052 sea build conversion rates, you could buy enough burgers from Federated Fast Food to become King of Meat Mountain until the birds showed up. Birds always ruin Meat Mountain. Where was I? Clan shit is expensive, keep this in mind. While it is an anti-everything platform that does everything really well, it can be easily further configured to do any specific thing better than anyone else. It's also really fucking expensive. In the large scheme of things, the Thor is the bass guitarist of any kick-ass rock band. Sure, he's as important as all Get Out, but he plays second string to the main show, which is the Timberwolf, or as I call it, the Mad Cat. Because you lost, Clanners. You lost. You had every single edge, and you lost. Yes, I'm biased. Long live the inner sphere. Remember May 20th, 3052, you clan bastards. We're coming for you. Anyways, till next time, or until YouTube decides you shouldn't watch me at all. I'm Tex. My editor is Matt Asgardian. And now, motherfucking Duncan Fisher. Okay, Duncan, uh, we've got a few minutes before the next match. How about we cut some of these spots while we're waiting? Um, you need some water? Water? No. <laughs> uh, I could use a refill, though. <laughs> uh, no, I'm good for now. Bottle's in here. Let's get them done. Let's see. Oops. All right. Uh, let's start with the Steiner Investment Council spot. Okay, Rick. Uh, uh, Let's do this Blackhead Legion one. Uh, okay, but it's actually Black Pants Legion. Oh, right. Uh, of course. Uh, I knew that. Uh, you know, you should get the lighting fixed in here, Rick. Uh, <clears throat> right. Uh, okay. Uh, rolling. Whenever you're ready. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Duncan Fisher here. You know, battle mechs and the Solaris arenas are a passion of mine, but today I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you about the Black Pants Legion. What is the Black Pants Legion, you may ask? 
It's a fantastic organ... Uh, D- Duncan, Duncan, you're putting a bit too much emphasis on the word pants. Ah, uh, of course. <laughs> Got it. <clears throat> from, from the top. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Duncan Fisher here. You know, battle mechs and the Solaris arenas are a passion of mine, but today I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you about the Black Pants Legion. What is the Black Pants Legion, you may ask? It's a fine... Uh, no, now, now you're saying black too hard. Uh, let's keep rolling. <clears throat> Today, I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you about the Black Pants Club. What is the Black Pants Club? No, hmm? no, it's Legion, not Club. Look, how about I get you some water or black coffee? H- how do you take it? I take it with a double shot of Irish whiskey. What's your point? Um... Well, I, I'm getting a lot of dry mouth sounds, like you're dehydrated, or... Maybe we should do these tomorrow morning, or maybe after you've sober. I mean, I have some food, or... or some... Mm. <laughs> oh, I see. Fuck you, Rick. I am not drunk. Or even a little tipsy. Listen, whoever wrote this script for the Black Pants Legion has never watched the show. This script is bullshit. It's fake. You know why I don't do a lot of commercials, Rick? It's not because I'm pretty fucking expensive to hire. It's because I have to believe in a product to endorse it. Usually, then the Black Pants Legion is a pretty goddamn endorsable show in my book. I love it. Even watched it once, for Christ's sake. The Black Pants Legion may be the last fucking bastion of unadulterated fun on YouTube. I mean, it isn't the sort of channel that has an adenoidly challenged British kid being snarky for the sake of videos, and it's not some fucking punk-run channel where grown men fall out of their chair at jump scares like some millennial bitch. It's actually a fucking rarity on YouTube, being a channel that has never tried to be fucking monetized and regularly gives the finger to the man. (laughs) I mean, shit, everyone's a goddamn sellout these days. Hawking games that don't work, selling shit that's garbage, shitting on their fans. Uh, So many channels are just talking heads whose only point is to sell a product, and there's no heart in that. And I'm all about fucking heart, that's for damn sure. I love the games on Solaris, and I fucking love the mech jocks who give it their all. If you pour your goddamn heart and passion into something, then you've got my respect. (laughs) So, yeah, the Black Pants Legion is a kind of YouTube channel where a misanthrope drinks his scotch, smokes his cigars, and says whatever the hell he wants for hours at a time. (laughs) Kind of reminds me of myself, now that I think about it. No scripts, infrequently edited, and brutally honest. The Black Pants Legion is worth subscribing to. The question is... Are you Legion material? Ah, uh, fuck it. All right, let's record this piece of shit script before I change my mind. Um, actually, Duncan, I think we just did. <laughs> that was great. I'll cut it up and send it off. Uh, but seriously, you really should ease up on the scotch during your show. Yeah, maybe you're right, Rick. <laughs> nah, fuck you. I'm Duncan Fisher. Ha! <laughs>